More on our top story, the kidnapping of a Costa Mesa woman at gunpoint in Uganda. Kimberly Encott and her tour guide were released unharmed after some ransom money was paid, but the kidnappers escaped. Kevin Coffey is here now. He is a travel safety consultant and expert. Uh, this was a dream trip, actually, to see the gorillas, and it turned into an absolute nightmare. I guess the first thing that we want to point out, first of all, thanks for being here, Kevin, really appreciate it, is that this doesn't happen very often. No, especially down there, in, if we take a look at safaris and related. It appears to be an isolated incident. However, since there's been some reports unconfirmed that the travel and tour company could have paid a ransom, that could open up a door to some very interesting conversations that could happen in the future. Well, See, that's the danger yeah. when it comes to paying a ransom because yes. then it just makes these kidnappers feel as though, okay, well, we got what we wanted, so let's go after our next victim. Absolutely. You know, you, that's what we saw on the Somali coast, right? Yes. It, it just became a yeah. business model, a niche business. So we hope this isn't going to happen because the, the government there in Uganda really has to step forward. But this is really, it's going to be, what is the travel and tour companies, what are they going to do to help prevent mm -hmm. this, and what type of insurance are they going to put in place? And we should point out that the uh, Ugandan authorities are, in fact, looking for those kidnappers now. But, but the U.S. policy is not to pay a ransom if an American is taken hostage. So that's something people should be aware of. So the question becomes, what do you do when you're traveling to a foreign country, even like Mexico, which is just south of our border, and apparently where things like this happen more often? These express kidnappings in Mexico. Yeah, and, and this is one of these unfortunate situations that we're dealing with here throughout the world, and even with us, like you mentioned, right next door to Mexico. One of the few things that we should start doing right away, and a lot of people don't take the time to do, is register with the U.S. Department of State. They have a program that's called the STEP program, and that lets the U.S. government know where you are, mm -hmm. and you can also get alerts on what's going on, especially if something changes in that region. It's very fluid sometimes, and even if we could be in nice resorts that we go visit all the time here in Mexico and parts of Cancun and Los Cabos, you know, when, when this changes instantaneously, mm -hmm. we need to get that information so we can get that from the STEP program. The other thing is probably the most important piece is really have to take a look at our insurance. Most travelers do not get traveler insurance when they travel abroad. Mm -hmm. And the challenge with that is, is that our insurance doesn't cover us when we're overseas. Especially if you look at evacuation insurance, if a medical incident were to occur, and that's the number one that issue that happens to travelers is medical. Mm -hmm. It's not crime. It's somebody ends up with some type of, of stomach disease or something like but that. Is kidnapping covered under this extra insurance that you get? Well, so it's not under regular travel insurance. You have to get a special rider for that. Ah. And there, are, there is insurance companies that cover this. A lot of them are. There's AIG, there's Travelers, there's American Underwriters, and Insurance Underwriters. They write specific policies for this. However, they are a little expensive. Uh, they could range anywhere from the area of $500 to $5,000, depending on how long you're going to go for. But that's where it comes down to asking the questions of your travel and tour company. Do they have have that type of insurance. Well, that's what we should be the asking. The money you just mentioned, I mean, in some cases, it, that, that sounds like co it would cost more than the trip itself. But if, Absolutely. If, but if you want to do this and be safe, I guess that's just a cost you're going to have so to pay. So what very specific things can you do? I, I know one of the things that, that we always hear is that you travel in groups. You don't travel alone. Right. Absolutely. So we talked about the Department of State registering for the STEP website. Number two is we need to go to the actually Department of State website and look at their crime reporting for that area, the region of the world where you're going to. Because sometimes that report, which is very, very specific, that'll tell you information that you wouldn't know of on your own, can give you an enlightened idea on what you should be more paying attention to. Now, I like to tell folks to go a little bit outside of the United States and take a look at the same databases that are done by the Canadian government, the UK government, and the Australian. Those three are the top ones. Mm. And it'll be interesting, they'll have some little different information when it comes out about crime in different parts of the world. Sometimes there's political sometimes there's there's a lot of money involved in the tourism ministry and nobody wants to offend someone so I like right. to take a look at a wide variety of information about the area that we're going to Wow great do tips. your homework great, yes. yeah good stuff uh, do your research that's right Kevin Goffey thank you so Thanks much, so much Kevin. very thank good you. to see you